Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at a more advanced topic and we're going to look particularly into how we can use different data sets for different requests. So let me give you a bit of background on this. I've demonstrated it in previous tutorials that you can take an external file. This can be a CSV file or a JSON file and essentially reuse some requests or essentially reuse the entire collection to run against different data sets. And this is like the basics of working with external data files. Now today I wanted to look more into this data driven kind of testing approach and to talk about supplying a different data set for each individual request. So let me show you here an example. I have a collection here with different requests and the first request is supposed to create a new employee. And I have here a list of first names, last names in an employee.json file. But at the same time, I also have here another request which will create a job position. And here I have another file and you can see this file contains more job positions. So it's not possible using the older approach to test with only three employee names, but with five job titles. So this is exactly what we're going to try to do in this tutorial. We're going to look at an approach on how we can merge these two files, employee.json and jobs.json. And to go over this collection, we're going to go over the first request and we're going to execute it three times each time with a different employee name. We're going to go over the second request, which doesn't have any data. And again, over the third request, where we're going to take a look at this entire list, we're going to run the third request five times. So that's the plan for today. I have to warn you in advance, it does contain a bit of JavaScript and it is a more advanced tutorial. Everything I'm talking about today, including this collection and all the scripts, will be available in the video description. Make sure you check that out. And also, just in case you get stuck, I just wanted to let you know about a Discord community for anyone using Postman, getting into other issues, wanting to meet other people working with Postman. Make sure you check out the Discord community, also link in the video description. With that being said, let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that this collection as it is works properly and that we can run these requests even locally without relying on a different data set. I'm using here a service called HTTP bin. I generally recommend that when you're trying to do something advanced that you try to break down the problem into smaller steps and maybe not even use your own APIs if they are too complex and try to start with something simple so that you understand the principles and then solve your own problems. So for this kind of debugging purposes, httpbin.org is a great service that can really help you understand what's going on. So I'm sending here some data and I'm sending it as query parameters just to make it easier to see in the collection runner. Typically we'll have such values in the body, but it makes absolutely no difference in terms of what we're trying to accomplish today. With that being said, in order to be able to use these variables, you'll see here they are marked in red, so they're unresolved. We want to get them from the file. But to be able to play locally a bit, uh, we're going to have to also define this variable somewhere. So you can either use an environment, if that's convenient, you can use global variables. I'm just going to go ahead and be a bit lazy and put them inside the same collection as well. So I'm going to click here on edit, I'm going to go to variables. So you already see I have here the base URL defined and pretty easily I'm going to define a first name. Make sure you set that current value because that's the one that's going to be used inside Postman. And also the last name. Pretty easy there. Let's write it here, last name. Okay. So as soon as we save this, you will see the color will turn from red into this orange. And now these variables are being resolved. So now if we go ahead and run this, request you will see what's happening here it's relatively easy to see that we're going to get this response it's essentially reflecting back the data that we're sending 
and I'm gonna go ahead and write a very simple test. I'm gonna check to see if these values are what I'm expecting. So I'm gonna use one of the snippets here that are available in Postman. Let's see where that JSON value check is. So check args. Doesn't really matter a lot what we're writing here. I like to define here this variable called response. And what we are asserting is response.args dot first name f name. I'm gonna have it equal something. I'm gonna look in a second. So let's put here who. And I'm gonna simply go ahead and duplicate that. And it will be last name and this should be bar. So simple test, you see it's passing. Also make sure that it fails. All good. So the next step would be to go also this third request here. And I'm just gonna go very fast over it. Again, finding this collection variable so that we can use it locally. Some job. Perfect. Should be arcs. So I'm not gonna go too much into testing. It doesn't really matter so much. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we have some tests and that we understand how to use these variables inside them. So I'm gonna have here this argument, job position, and the value would be some job. This is what we are expecting here. All right, perfect. So now we have a collection where we already have some tests and we're just trying to get some dynamic data into it. We're gonna test different data sets or how it's also called data-driven testing. All right, the next step was to combine the two JSON data sets that I had into a single one. And I did as follows. As you can see here, the JSON starts with an array because it still has to be an iteration technically in Postman. So it's gonna be a single iteration and it contains a single object. And this object essentially contains a property called requests. And this is where I'm storing all the requests that I want to execute. And for each individual request, I have the name, which is the same name as the request name. And I also have defined here the data set, which is essentially the same as it was in the individual JSON file. So I have to request create employee, create job description, and this is what I have. Now the next step is going inside Postman and actually reading this file, or not necessarily reading it, but more parsing it, understanding the data that's inside there. So this is the part that requires a bit of JavaScript. And in order to get that to run, uh, what I did is inside the collection itself, you can go here on edit. And all of this has to happen essentially before a request is executed. So I've used here the pre-request script to inject this data into each individual request as needed. And I know it looks scary in the beginning, but I'm gonna quickly go over the code so that you understand what's going on and to make your general experience a bit easier. As I mentioned, all this collection, all this code is available in the video description for you to download and play uh, with it. So what's happening here in the first instance is that we're using pm.iterationData.object. Now when we're injecting this uh, from the collection runner or from Newman, we're essentially getting access to the entire iteration. In our case, because we have a single iteration technically in the file, we get access to almost the entire file content. So this is why we're using here, we're getting it as an object and we're just putting it into a variable called request data. So this is just a temporary storage that we're, uh, that we're using. Of course, we have also some error handling here just in case we don't provide any data files or uh, essentially if we're still inside Postman, we don't have a data file so that we can still work with this kind of request. This is where the interesting part comes. What we're trying to do is uh, with 
pm.info.requestName, we're trying to figure out which is the current request that we are running. For example, if we're running create employee, we want to find the data for create employee. And with this, we are essentially going through this all this data request that we have configured there, and we're just getting the current request. And of course, if we don't have a request, if we don't have anything defined, we're just gonna log it and say, we don't have any information there. Otherwise, all the information that is inside that file, all this data that you see here, for example, the first name, last name for one of these iterations, we need to expose these as Postman variables. And we're doing this by essentially iterating over the data that we have and using pm.variables.set. We're sending a local variable and then this information will be available inside the request. And finally, uh, we're using another trick from Postman that is Postman set next to request. And Postman set next request allows us to decide where we want to go next. Now, in the case of create employee, we know we have a couple of data sets we need to iterate over. So as long as this data set is still there and uh, we're essentially, every time we're going over the request, we're uh, using here data.shift, this will remove one item from the list, from the data set. So we're gonna still come back to the same request. So this is what set next week is going. Is there still data? Yes, run create employee once more. Is there still more data? Yes, run create employee one more. If there's no more data, the default behavior that Postman has is to simply go to the next request. It's a lot of code, I know. Of course, if you know a better way or a more optimal way on how to solve this, I would be more than happy to hear from you. This is just like something that I you know, coded very fast. The main idea or essentially any practical solution around this will have to use Postman set next request and we'll have to somehow store this JSON file inside the Postman variable. You know, the coding itself and how it's done, that's another story. You can build it as you wish. Probably now it's time to take it for a test run and see if it's working properly. It may not work, we may have to do some debugging, but yeah, let's click here on the run again, see what happens. Actually, it's looking promising. So what's going on here? We have went over this create employee. We have executed it three times. We know that our data set contains exactly three entries. And we can see here from the expectation that's failing that we had Jessica, we had James and we had Maria. So that looks good. The second request, it's only executed once. It doesn't even have any tests, so it's not so problematic. And then we have the third request that has five data entries developer, QA manager, store manager, manager. So surprisingly, this looks very good. Don't get carried away by the fact that these tests are still failing. We have to go ahead and fix those as well. But it's a good thing that they are failing and that this is working properly. So essentially, the tests are failing because we have here some hard-coded data. Now, whenever we're working with external data files, we also have to make our tests dynamic. In order to make our test dynamic, we'll have to use here pm.variables.get. And what's important to notice about pm.variables.get is that it will get the variables depending on the scope. And I'm going to show you in a second what I mean by that. I think the name here is last name. And this will be first name. So... So what do we have so far? So we, now we can see that this is working properly or not. Expected food to deeply equal bar. Maybe I still got, ah, should be first name and then the last name. Last name. So now it's dynamically picking up the variables that we have. In a similar way, we can do it for job position as well. So nothing special there. position. All right, so this test is passing. Now let's go ahead and see if the rest of this execution that we have here, this is working also still. So you'll see here all the tests passed as well. Create employee executed three times, get reference number only once. Create job position executed 
five times. All the tests are passing. You can easily go inside the request, click here or the request URL, see which information has been sent just to double check that everything is working properly. And essentially that's about it. This is how I would solve this, let's say a bit more complex problem of using different data sets in the same collection and trying to get this to run. Scripting is always tricky. As you've seen, Postman is not really helpful in terms of like showing you on which line a specific error is occurring. For that reason, it's always super important that you use console log and try to debug your scripts, try to understand what's going on and why something is working, why something is not working. As you've seen for the if blocks, if you're not getting inside an if block, it's always helpful to put here a console log. For example, it will say here for the second request, get reference number. It will indicate here that it's skipping this request because there's no data available here. So get reference number has no data defined. So you can take it externally and handle it that way. So I guess that's about it for this tutorial. I hope it was useful. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this and leave a comment in the section below. I would really love to hear from you if this was useful, what other advanced workflows or things are you trying to do with Postman. And hope to see you next time at another tutorial. Bye bye, guys.